had the privilege to meet a wonderful man, husband, grandfather, and great-grandfather. Unfortunately, he is not with us anymore. This is my honor to say that this program is dedicated to my In the presence of eyes which witnessed the slaughter, which saw the oppression the heart could not bear. And as a witness, the heart that once taught compassion until the days came to pass that crushed human feeling. I have taken an oath to remember it all, to remember, not once to forget. to enjoy what is natural and good in human life. The freedom to live as open whole beings. The freedom not to hurt our eyes, walk our hearts, or run at the sound of footsteps. The freedom to live less from the start. <clears throat> To remember our need to take suffering seriously. It takes great strength to keep witnessing the pain of others and not say that it has nothing to do with us. Let us be a community that reminds ourselves of this. <coughs> Wisdom can come to us in the unlikeliest circumstances, not always visible to those around us. They come in sorrow from the thing we do not think we can bear, and bear somehow. We light this candle for wisdom. We have learned this much. We do not live alone. We are Jews, and friends of Jews. By now we must admit we all have in our possession the key to survival. <coughs> this candle as a witness to hope. In spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. I simply can't build up my hopes on a foundation on confusion, misery, and death. I see a world gradually being turned into a wilderness. I can feel the suffering of millions, and yet, if I look up into the heavens, I think that it will all come right, that this cruelty will end, and that peace and tranquility will return again. I am Frank. 
Sham Romi Hamid Semenu Hanekona Tahat Kanfe Hashekina. Today we mark Yom HaShoah, the Holocaust of Between 1939 and 1949, <coughs> six million Jews were murdered by the Nazis and their collaborators. Of these, one and a half million were children and teenagers. Whole families were destroyed during this period, and thus the names of their getting as many children and children still remained unknown. Few of them kept dying, and some of them were discovered at a later date. Today we will read from some of those diaries. children enjoyed a relatively normal, worry-free childhood before the Second World War. Whether from Poland, Germany, Hungary, or Lithuania, they were born into Jewish communities that had existed in Europe for thousands of years. Three. When I grow up and reach the age of 20, I'll set out to see the enchanting world. I'll take a seat in a bird with a motor. I'll rise and soar high into space. I'll fly, sail, hover over the lovely faraway world. I'll soar over rivers and ocean, skyward. Shall I ascend and blossom? A cloud for my sister, the wind for my brother. Although the fate of the Jews differed greatly under Nazi domination, the unfolding of events followed similar lines for our young diary keepers. The German occupation severely disrupted the children's lives. Eva Heyman was still only 13 when the Germans invaded her hometown. Despite her tender age, she had a sense of the unfolding danger. March 19, 1944. Dear diary, you're the luckiest one in the world because you cannot feel. You cannot know what a terrible thing has happened to us. The Germans have come. Life changed dramatically for these children and their family. As the Germans conquered each country, they instituted unhumane laws, validating prejudice and torture. Fear of their cruelty limited social protest and rebellion. Under such conditions, the right to live became highly questionable, and the death counts became the ultimate solution. In order to isolate Jews and keep them more easily under control, then Nazis decided to concentrate them in ghettos. Living conditions in the ghettos were extremely bad. Hunger and disease killed off thousands of people. <laughs> 